to my channel. Today we have Al Gore versus Donald Trump. Remember, Al Gore is the former vice president of the United States under President Bill Clinton. Donald Trump being the incumbent president. Um, Al Gore ran in 2000 and lost to George W. Bush. And if you remember that, it was super close in states like Florida. Um, Donald Trump has completely reshaped the electoral map for Republicans as we know it. I mean, I really only see the Rust Belt possibly going for someone like Trump. I don't see it going for any other Republican candidate unless the Democratic candidate is really bad. Personally, I only saw Trump as a victor there, but he won by small margins. Don't try to say he won by a landslide victory. Sure, it may have been somewhat an electoral college landslide, but the victories in the states that actually mattered, like Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, he all won by less than 1%, or in Pennsylvania, he won by less than 2%. But overall, it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that this is this was a wave election for Donald Trump, but it's not really safe to say that these states will go to him in 2020. I mean, these states um, like Indiana and North Carolina went for Obama in 08. Does that mean they're safe blue for the rest of the term? No, they weren't safe blue. And they voted Republican by 11 points in 2012, and then for Trump by 19%. So... And then North Carolina voted for Trump. Um, it didn't even vote for Obama in 2012 when, when Obama won the election. And the Rust Belt isn't really something that can be tampered with that easily. I mean, George H.W. Bush won it, and then he lost it. The reason why he lost it is because he didn't go through with all of his promises. If Donald Trump doesn't bring back jobs to the Rust Belt and the economic epicenter in these areas, then he's not going to win these states. That's plain and simple. They don't, they're not tired of... They're not tired of the liberal media or anything. It's just, there is a liberal media. Sure, some people voted for Trump out of spite of that. But he, if conservatives are going to want to look to the future and see, hey, how can we win in the future? You're going to have to focus on a lot more than just, we're going to have to focus on a lot more than just saying, hey, these went for Trump in 2016. They might as well go for him again. You're gonna, we're going to need to do some hard campaigning in the Rust Belt. Um, focus more on these states that are... Swing states like Florida, you may or may not need to touch. I mean, that one um, went for Trump by surprising um, largely, but then again, it went for Obama by three percent, and then he won it by zero point three. So you're gonna we're gonna need some hard campaigning. But right now, this is Al Gore. I mean, the former vice president under Bill Clinton, who is unpopular right now. Um, Donald Trump is also unpopular, but I think that Al Gore, he's had two. This will be. Um, another campaign that he had. He ran in 2000. 20 years later, he's running again. So, we can just go through with all the safe states. California, Oregon, and Washington. Um, Alaska, safe for Republicans. Hawaii, Arizona. Oops. Um, all five of the Nebraska electoral votes I'm going to give to Trump. Indiana, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. Tennessee, Iowa, and Ohio, I'm going to give to Trump for now, and Maine, 2nd Congressional District. These are going to be safe Trump um, areas that I'm projecting for him, and then I'm going to go through all the safe Democratic areas, um, New Mexico. Actually, I'm going to leave that one as a toss-up. Um, Colorado's a toss-up. Nevada is a toss-up. Um, Illinois is a toss-up. The Rust Belt, toss-up. Um, Vermont... I mean, things can drastically change throughout um, the entire year. I mean, it's not safe to say that Democrats will win um, the Rust Belt, but it's not safe to say that Republicans will win the Rust Belt either. It's going to be hotly contested, and I think it'll come down to around 3 a.m. like it did last time. Um, I'm going to give three out of the four electoral votes to Al Gore from Maine. So now we have 190 for Al Gore to 231 for Trump. This is um, something you'd never see in a prediction map where the Republican actually comes ahead, because normally the Democrats always are assumed to win the Rust Belt, and that usually puts them ahead, along with Minnesota. They're assumed to win these states, so these are states that are, quote-unquote, so these are states that were, quote-unquote, solidly for them, but now they're more of toss-up states. Um, Minnesota, I'm just going to give to Al Gore, just because of the fact Hillary Clinton won it, and I think Al Gore could appeal to the working-class voter here better than Trump can. But I don't think Al Gore can appeal to minorities as well as Hillary Clinton did. So, which is why I'm going to give Florida to Trump. That puts him at 260. He can win any of the Rust Belt states or Virginia. 
or you can win a combination of New Hampshire and Nevada, or Colorado and New Hampshire, or if you win two of these states, it's over. Um, so right now, I'm. I think Hillary Clinton definitely got an edge in Virginia, um, with Tim Kaine's approval rating there. Um, I saw someone who commented it was too close um, for comfort, even with Tim Kaine's presence in Virginia. Sure, he helped him, but it should have been even more of a landslide for Hillary there. I think that was because of the silent Trump vote, the people who didn't tell the pollsters that they were voting for Trump. But I'm going to give Michigan for to Gore because of the fact that this one was a very close 2016 state. It voted for Trump um, the least. It, it was the one that voted for Trump least out of all the Rust Belt states. So um, he won it by 10,000 votes, 11,000 actually. But I'm just going to say 10,000. Um, I'm just going to say this one would go to Gore because I think that Gore could appeal to the working class better. Now, this is keep in mind, this is if Trump doesn't keep his promises. I'll do if Trump does keep his promises at the end of the video. This is if Trump doesn't um, is doesn't follow through and is not is as unpopular as he is now. Um, with that saying, I'm going to give him the entire Rust Belt and Virginia because it did go for Hillary Clinton. Right now, it's at 259 to 260. Um, North New Hampshire, I'm going to give to Gore. And Nevada, I'll give to Gore just because of the fact that the Latino president there will not elect Trump unless he is a good president. And this is contingent on that he's not. I'm going to go over the fact if he was a good president um, in a minute. And I would give Colorado to Gore. So that would put Gore at 278 to 260, the map that was the final polling date, the final um, non-toss-up polling. Actually, the no final non-toss-up polling on Election Day would have given Trump um, Nevada. But Trump did not win Nevada. Hillary won Nevada, and this would have been the likely, the most like, um, the most likely path to victory for Hillary Clinton on election night. She did not win in Iowa, Ohio, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, or Arizona. She would have need if she was to take the Rust Belt with all the other states she won. She would have taken the election two seventy eight to two sixty, but that didn't happen because she lost the Rust Belt. Now, if Trump doesn't follow through with his promises, I could easily see the Rust Belt flipping back. It was by such a small margin that it's too close to lose a single percentage in these states. If 1% of your supporters, or let's say 5% of your supporters in these states don't support you anymore, you're not going to win the state because of how close it was. You're going to need to expand your base rather than try to keep it. You're going to need to keep your base, but then you're going to also need to keep um, you're also going to need to expand on your base so you can win by even bigger margins, especially since the incumbent always wins more electoral votes once they are re-elected. So if Trump, except for Obama and um, Woodrow Wilson, but that was because Obama won a wave election. Trump also won a wave election, but I definitely could see him expanding depending on who the Democratic nominee is. He could win Minnesota, um, Nevada, Colorado, even Virginia and New Mexico, but Right now, let's just go over if Trump did keep his promises. Now, in the Rust Belt, this one surprisingly voted for him, as I've been saying. So, if he does keep his promises, I definitely could see him taking it, especially against a candidate like Al Gore, who already had a failed campaign. And I think that, even though he may appeal to the white working class, I think if Trump does a good job, they will completely disregard that. Um, Hillary could better appeal to the white working class than Donald Trump could, but they voted for Trump um, because of the jobs factor. But... Hillary Clinton is less rich than Donald Trump, and if we're basing it off, who could best appeal to? I built myself up, not, um, my pa my family was not rich before I was. So, Hillary would have better appealed to them, but Donald Trump appealed to them. Why? Because of jobs. So, if he's able to keep that message strong, he would win the election. Actually, he would win it with Wisconsin. And I'm giving him Michigan and Pennsylvania. And right now we're at the spot that Trump was in 2016, 306 to 232. Um, remember that this was very, very close in some of these states. like Especially states like Arizona and Georgia surprised me. They were closer than states like Ohio and Iowa. And Arizona and Georgia were not as much a swing states as Ohio and Iowa. Ohio went for Obama. Georgia did not go for Obama. But there was a 4% difference in victory for Trump from Ohio and Georgia. And G Georgia, he won less. Um, like I saw Nate Silver's article saying that Georgia and Pennsylvania should just go separate ways. Pennsylvania to the Democrats. No, they both went to the Republican Party. Um, the grand old party. And really, it's not, they're not going partisan ways. They're just, 
They're just voting who they think would better the economy, and obviously that would have been Donald Trump because of his past. And um, really, these states are very... They're, they're different than they were a couple years ago. I mean, you would never see the Rust Belt flip, but not New Hampshire flip. You would never see Virginia blue, but the Rust Belt red. That was, that was unheard of, and that was not likely in any scenario whatsoever. Um, in 2004... George Bush was expected to win Wisconsin, but he didn't. Um, the Rust Belt stayed, even though polling showed him ahead. But polling showed Hillary ahead in Wisconsin by 7%. And the thing was, the silent Trump vote that everyone denied was there, but it was there. And another fault for Democrats is they need to figure out how to turn out minorities like they did in 2012 and 2008. They only win elections when minorities turn out to vote, or they nominate someone from the South. Now, the only way they will ever do that again is that they nominate... Um, someone who comes from a from the Obama administration who may hurt themselves eventually like Hillary Clinton did, but Al Gore is not the candidate, especially if Trump does a good job. I mean, Al Gore would need everything working against Trump more than it did in 2016, more than just the media bashing him 24-7. He would need more scandals. He would need him not to follow through with 0% zero, zero of his promises in order to win the election. If Trump is able to keep his promises, I could definitely see him flipping Virginia, flipping Minnesota, um, New Hampshire. But I do think that because of the Latino presence here in Nevada and Colorado and New Mexico, I don't think that one will flip. But this will be my final map if Trump does keep his promises. Um, really, this is it, it will be another wave election for Donald Trump. I think he'll expand his Electoral College victory, especially if he is able to keep his promises. And... I just wanted to thank you all for 250 subscribers. I can't believe I... That's, that, that just baffles me, the fact that I've reached this so far in such little time. Um, when I first uploaded my first video, I stopped uploading for two weeks because I didn't see... I didn't think that I would um, have the time, nor would I um, ever be able to grow as big as I am now. Now I'm trying to do daily videos. I wanted to thank you all for that. And again, please comment suggestions down. This one was a suggestion. And I did a video on it, so I just want more suggestions because they're very fun to make. And I'll see you all tomorrow.